Hi guys, how's everybody doing? So I <clears throat> hope you're all ready for Christmas and all that. I uh, I think I'm ready. Monday's going to be quite a delivery day around here. <laughs> um, so I just thought I would turn the camera on and uh, just sort of, you know, play around <clears throat> with some stuff. I bought a couple different sizes of uh, uh, library pockets and I'll tell you what heck of a lot easier to buy these than uh, to make them but there's tons of videos on YouTube showing you easy ways to make library pockets so <clears throat> I'll put a link in the description uh, to the Amazon listings or it's actually just one listing where I got these. They're kind of a like a cream color, um, like off-white a little bit. Um, I got like, this is just the like economy one. They measure, um, I think they're three and a half. Yeah, three and a half by three and a quarter tall. The pocket part is two and a half inches high. So, you know, this is about three quarters of an inch. And then, so this was the economy one. And then this one is just a deep pocket with a low back. They have a, they have another one that's a deep pocket with a high back. Um, those ones, I think, are self-adhesive, though. And I, you know, those are a lot more expensive, the ones that are self-adhesive. But, you know, if you want to drop the drop the cash and get the self-adhesive ones they come with just a peel off back um, but I thought it might be cool to you know do some stuff on the back of them too anyway so these all together measure four and a half so the pocket part is uh, three and three quarters and then these ones are a little bit wider these are no I guess they're the same they're the same width so Anywho, so they're just little pockets, just, you know, nice to have for, um, you know, sticking on pages or even to clip in. And I thought it might be kind of fun to actually do some, like, hidden paper clips with these. I've um, been sort of toying with the idea of making some of those, kind of like Carla does in her, in her journals. Um, anyway, so... I picked up some flower books lately and this one is I believe it was from the concise British flowers or something I can't remember the name of it oh my god that's terrible um, anyway it's a it's just like a British uh, flower book and um, I will see if I can find the title to it and put it in the description. This is a book that I saw on Tracy Fox's channel that she recommended as a source for botanical images. So, um, and she's also, she's got another, she's got a video where she talks about a bunch of different books that she pulls images from. And I'll see if I can find that and I'll try to remember to put that in the description also um, because she's she you know she has access to it seems like in uh, the UK they've got tons of really cool flower books and stuff so anyway and then I recently uh, put together some page packs where I was offering a whole bunch of different pages from about a dozen or so different botanical books so if you're interested in one of those, send me an email and I will uh, let you know about those. They're $20 um, for, for that assortment of pages. Anyway, so as you guys may already know, I've got a thing for ledgers and ledger pages. And so I just pulled pages from a bunch of different ones, a couple of scraps, uh, just looking at different types of handwriting some that were, um, this one is in French. Um, these are all, you know, pretty old ledgers. And, um, you know, some with numbers and some with lots of, you know, scripty um, 
decorative like handwriting and stuff like that different colors too I like to use different um, tones of, of color of ledger so I'm not even really looking at um, you know the the content so much as the tone and the deck like the pattern that the writing creates and and that kind of thing that's what I like to kind of focus on when I'm looking at ledger pages um, I don't currently have ledger page packs available but you know I'm willing to maybe put some together if somebody's interested and then I also pulled just some book pages kind of just looking at the same types of things where looking at what kind of um, patterns and textures and stuff the different fonts and different text uh, creates and um, of course different tones of of uh, that kind of beiges and stuff there's a little bit of pink here this is actually from a um, autograph book a real old autograph book so anyway so basically just doing a little bit of collage may I don't even know if I would call it collage I'm sort of just you know gluing different papers onto these pockets and um, you know maybe add some labels and stuff like that but I just kind of wanted to decorate them a little bit um, so some of them I'm doing like a book page on the front and then I'm using a different type of paper sort of contrasting to line the inside just just like you know just to line the back of it these are actually little uh, paper bags I think I got those at Hobby Lobby anyway so like this one I use ledger and then I use some of the botanical paper um, on the back right this is really all I'm doing is just using two different types of paper just to keep it simple and um, so the the pocket is just straight across and so all I really am worried about is you know making sure I don't want to waste a lot of paper so I try to just cut that so that it'll definitely be tall enough and then I'm just using um, glue stick to adhere this to the pocket just making sure that I line it up really straight across that so I don't have to worry about trimming it or anything and then just pressing pretty firmly around the edges just to be sure that it really sticks around those edges I do plan on doing just a, a real simple you know straight stitch on the sewing machine around the border of the bottom part of this pocket because you can do that on these pretty easily because it's got this little like it sticks out just a tiny bit see so I'm just running my stitch right along that outside edge anyway so just doing that and then you know so that was with the book page and then um, that one's not wide enough this one is wide enough just try to cut that straight across whoops <laughs> I didn't mean to glue on the pocket I meant to glue on the paper oops definitely works better to apply the glue to the paper instead of the pocket because um, it gets kind of messy when you apply it to this up at that top edge and you run the risk of gluing your pocket shut too and you don't want to do that so I also keep a baby wipe handy for cleaning up my desk here or you know if I'm using a mat or something like that and then um, wipe off any excess glue on the pocket okay so there's one with like a botanical paper and then let's find one um, let's find a piece of ledger paper to use I really love this French one it's so pretty all of the 
uh, almost every page has different colors of ink and that kind of stuff. So it's kind of cool. Let me do this with a, I'll do one of the taller ones with this. So I really just want to make sure that it's wide enough. And so it can kind of look at the lines of the, of the page. And I know that if I cut straight along that line, it's going to be wide enough. I could use this side too. I kind of like using the number. I like to have the number at the top from the, the corner of the page, you know. So just cut that. It's so hard to sacrifice some of this handwriting by, you know, <laughs> gluing the, by gluing it down on that side. But I have to sacrifice something, I guess, if I want to use the original page. I have scanned some of this French ledger, some of the more interesting pages. Obviously, you know, I can't scan the whole thing. It's, it was a large ledger. Um, anyway, but some of my favorite pages I have scanned, and I actually saved those. I set them aside so I could, I don't know, do something with them later. Anyway, so that's basically, um, you know, what I'm doing. And then I do want to align the, the pocket with something. So what I'll do is just add um, like a little strip of something that's different, you know. So I'll just use a piece of the ledger paper on this one. And I'm just estimating. I just want to make sure that it's tall enough to fit down inside the pocket. So, you know, it doesn't have to go all the way down inside there, right? Um, actually, you know what? I kind of like this little part better. With that black writing. Okay, so the only thing you really need to worry about is that it's going to fit inside there. And since there's that little bit of overhang on the library pockets, it's, it's not really a big deal. Um... Hang on. So I just mark with a pencil. I line up one edge to the to that very corner right there and then mark with a pencil where the other edge is. And then when I cut, I want to cut on the inside of that just to be sure that it actually fits inside the pocket and just kind of test it out first just to be sure, right? And so it goes in there and it fits nicely along um, both edges. And then a Again, apply the glue to this piece because you want it to be you want it to be adhered where it's inside the pocket too. You don't want that to be loose in there. So then just slide that in. Try to make sure it's straight at least. There we go. I'm just wiping off some of the excess glue. Let this dry, and then we'll trim them. So this one, I think I want to do some of the botanical paper. And I'm just checking to make sure it's wide enough. And, I mean, you could just measure this, too, if you want. I mean, it doesn't have to be um, eyeballed if you you're the type of person that likes to measure and make sure on stuff, then definitely measure how wide you need this. Um, yeah. <laughs> if you're going to do a whole bunch of them, it's probably easier to just go ahead and measure the width and then just cut your strips that you're going to use as your liner on all of them all at the same time. And then all you have to do is just cut pieces off that you're going to use. Instead of doing each one individually. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? All right. <clears throat> okay. So that's two. And then on this one with the book page, um, I think I'll go ahead and use uh, some of the ledger paper again. And then I'll probably add some kind of 
like floral um, image or something on the front of this. So I'm just making sure this is going to fit. Sometimes you have to be careful with the ledger papers when they have, you know, handwriting on them because you don't know what that ink is, like if it's uh, water soluble or not. And sometimes, sometimes it is. And um, when it gets wet, it will smear. So I try not to do too much um, wiping with the baby wipe on the actual front of the ledger that, you know, unless I want it to smear which sometimes it doesn't bother me if it's all smeared, right? Okay, so that's that. And then let's go back to the first one that I did. And I'm just going to trim along the sides, trying not to cut the pocket open. But if you do accidentally cut the pocket open, it's not a big deal. You're going to stitch it closed anyways. I hate those scissors. I like them for cutting thread and stuff, but not really for this kind of stuff. And I left my other ones in my room that I really like to trim little tiny things with. Okay, so I cut along the sides and then along that curved back and then you can see that it's still you know it's um anyway the little part that sticks out <laughs> anyway okay and then this is the larger one it's probably best to let let these absolutely dry before you start trimming them but if you don't care about glue on your scissors and it doesn't matter See, it's hard to get into that little that little notch, which is why I try to at least make one side like flush with that. There. And the last one. And then I thought, you know, it'd be kind of cool to do some kind of like writing paper or something on the back. So if you wanted to use this just like as a, uh, like a floating pocket, you'd be able to write on the back and it would be kind of decorative, you know, rather than just the back of that envelope like that. You know, maybe just some grid paper or some coffee dyed paper or something like that. Okay. So those three pockets. And then, you know, I could just take like a little, just a little strip of this. just tear off a piece of it and uh, add that down here on this corner. I'm going to ink around the edges of it just to give it a little bit of distressing. Let's glue that on. And I like this because you can see the, na the, like the names of the the plants and stuff are like handwritten in there in that book. It's really cool. And it's already like an off white color. It's not like real stark white, the, the pages themselves. So I kind of like that. A lot of times I, uh, I coffee dye or tea dye those pages because I just like them to have a little bit of aging, you know, so that, I, I like that, just like that. And then on this one, I want to put just a little bit of book page, maybe. 
something kind of, mm, I don't like that. Oh, how about, nope, <laughs> I don't like that either. I want more contrast. Okay, I like this one. Just a little, little piece of it. This old paper, it's hard to ink it sometimes. Yeah, see that the ink on there is running just a little bit with the, the moisture from the baby wipe. So try not to wipe it too much. And then on this one, let's see, let's just do another little piece of like a different ledger. Like this one with all these numbers. Just adding a little bit of interest, you know. Okay, and I'll trim that one. Okay, so we're doing uh, for Christmas the last seven, eight years or so since my older kids have been grown and they have families and stuff, rather than everybody worrying about everybody buying presents for everybody, we started doing this, like, you know, drawing names and we would usually do it at Thanksgiving, draw names and everybody spends, you know, a hundred dollars, you can't spend more than a hundred dollars and you just get a gift for that person. Um, but then we decided, you know, it might be more fun to do, like, the white elephant thing where you can, like, steal someone's present and stuff. So we did that one year, but it's still at that $100. And then my son, Sammy, um, last year, he said, I think it would be fun if we did that with, like, three presents where, you know, you buy three, like, $35 presents. And, um, and then we could do, like, three rounds of the white elephant. So we did that last year, and it was really fun. It was just really fun. And so um, we're doing that again this year. And all my stuff that I, I am doing that with is coming um, from Amazon. <laughs> supposed to be here Monday. Anyway, so then I thought it would be cool to add like a label. And I've got a bunch of uh, Tracy's like nature definitions labels. That I printed out on sticker paper. So I thought those would be kind of fun to use on these. I like that blue with the blue writing on the ledger. Just real simple, you know. And then that one is kind of like a orange color. And so I'll add, I'll add a little label. I'm going to ink around the edge of this. Just kind of grunge it up a little bit. The sticker paper is pretty good. I don't really worry about it coming up. Um, otherwise, I would, you know, put some glue down first. But it does, it, it's pretty good. And just ink this one. Oops, there we go. And the last one, I'm going to actually cut these corners so they're like mitered a little bit. I sort of like that better sometimes. I just re-inked my pad with the vintage photo and it's super juicy. Um, okay, so I'm just going to offset that a little bit. All right. And then 
I thought it would be kind of fun to do like a tab on at least one of them. So I've got some uh, tabs that I've already punched out. I'm going to ink it up. Yeah, that, that pad is like super juicy and since I have come over to the dark side on the art glitter glue I've decided that it is awesome for gluing on tabs so I'm gonna let's see I think I'm just gonna put it over here on the side And I might add an eyelid on there or something. Maybe. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know if I like that one so much, but it's not so bad. It's not terrible. I'll do this one on the top. So yeah, do any of you guys do that kind of thing at Christmas or, you know, where you play a game or, you know, just to, I don't know, it just kind of makes it less of a burden on people. And because really my thinking is that Christmas is really, for me, it, for me, as far as gifts and stuff, you know, it's like if I want to give somebody something for Christmas, then I do. And I just don't like feeling obligated to do it. And to be honest, um, I just feel like it's mostly for the kids, you know, for me, for me. And <clears throat> so I always just try to make sure that I do something nice for my grandkids. And if I have younger kids that are mine, like before they were all grown, then I would definitely make sure that I, you know, got presents for them. And, but the older guys, it's like, they get it and they know that it's like, I don't know. I guess it just depends sometimes on my financial situation, what I do, but, um, but I, and our family can come up with a hundred dollars. And, you know, if we know that's what we're doing every year, then, you know, you can buy your presents earlier in the year and you know when maybe you have the money or some extra or something or if you see something cool and you know but maybe you don't know who you want to give it to but it's a cool present so anyways that's what we're doing okay so those are cool I don't know I like them and then I want to add an eyelet in some of these so I picked up this hole punch uh, off of Amazon the other day, and I like it because it can punch up to 20 pages, and it punches a perfect hole for these eyelets that I bought also on Amazon, and it was a thousand sets, so they're all kind of like a bronze color, and I think it was about $10 for all of these, so they were like a penny a piece, you know, and... Uh, they're a tiny bit larger than the ones that come, the We Are Memory Keepers ones. These are just a teeny bit bigger, but they're per this punch is a perfect hole for those. <clears throat> so I'm just going to punch a hole in this um, tab so I can add an eyelet to it. But... I'll show you what I'm talking about. It's hard to explain. Um, I still use the... I'm going to put this one off to the side. So there's this little metal piece, this little bit of like steel right there that you can see. That's where the hole punches. So if you're trying to line it up and get it exactly where you want the hole, use that as your guide. This was $5, and I thought that was pretty smashing deal um, but I still use the crocodile to uh, to crimp these 
I don't use the washer that comes with them. I don't use that. I just, I don't know. It's just too fiddly for me. But these fit in there just perfect. And the Cropodile will still crimp them just fine. See? And I like that it gives you a little bit bigger hole to, to work with. So you can put fabric through them or whatever. But the hole that this punches is slightly smaller than these. It works perfect for the We Are Memory Keepers grommets or eyelets. It works perfect for those, but if if you get some of these that are, you know, not made by them, they tend to be slightly larger. And also the ones that you can buy at, like, Joann's, they have a set of eyelets that are in the sewing notions, and those are slightly larger too, but, but you can still smash them with the crocodile. So, so that's those just with the eyelets added, and then, I mean, you could do whatever on these, right? You could add washi tape and masking tape or glue some fabric on them or whatever. Just decorate them however you want. You could add some cheesecloth and just add a really pretty picture or something. I am... Just gonna do some cheesecloth in that eyelet. I'm gonna tie it so it sort of goes off on both sides like that. And I don't worry about tying it twice, it, it'll stay just fine. And then, let's see, oh, that's a pretty color. So this is some uh, sorry silk that's like a, um, a chiffon type of uh, sari. And so it's very, like, translucent. It's, like, really, really thin, and I think it's just beautiful. And I get that from a seller on Etsy. And I think it's Julia L. Crafts. I just got three more rolls of it from her. And I will... Boy, I need to start making a list of all the stuff I'm supposed to link. I will link her shop in the description. Because... And I think it, I think it was $9.99 or $9.95. Um, and you get about 70 yards of that silk. And it's just cool. It's just really, really cool. It's neat, like, if you iron it. If you got one of the um, the journals that I just had on um, on Etsy, a lot of the ties, the, the larger ones, not the minis, but a lot of the ties that I did on those, I used this. And um, you can dye it with any kind of ink, distress ink, you know, um, archival ink, any ink, really, will you can use to dye those. So, so you can just, you know, just get the white and then you can coffee dye it or, you know, do whatever color you want. So that, oh, whoops, <laughs> one more. Hold on, hold the phone. Let's, well, I'm just going to do something like this in, in this other one too. I was thinking it might be kind of cool to do um, like a charm or something, but. We don't need to do that right now. I just don't have that stuff pulled out. So, But on some of them, I would probably add a charm. Like on a piece of ball chain or even just with a jump ring or something. So, and the other thing that's kind of cool about that stuff is that it tears real easy. So, I like to sometimes tear it into two pieces, but then still loop both of them through. Let's 
it's a little bit thick, I think. It's a little bit heavy. I think I'm going to pull that out and just use one. We'll just use one and then I will see if I can shred that a little bit. Just kind of take it and tear it so that it's in a couple pieces. Let's tear it up to up to the knot there. Okay. So there's those. And then you know I think it would I think it would look nice to uh, maybe round the corners on these. And I'm not, oh, I forgot, I was, <laughs> I should have probably stitched these before I put this on there, but, um, and then I'm just going to run a real, you know, thin little line of stitching on the sewing machine around that edge. See, just like right along the very edge, just a straight stitch. And I think that just kind of finishes it off nicely and uh, it looks good. So I will do that off camera, but um, I'll take a picture so I can post that as the, um, the thumbnail on the video. So yeah, um, and then just ink them up. Of course, got to ink them. You don't have to, but. So I'm working on some journals. I am going to take a few days off, I think, maybe. I don't know. I don't know. I love making journals. That's just, I'm just doing what I love to do. So, you know, if I feel like taking some time off, I'm going to. If I don't, then I won't, but. So anyways, I'm doing some uh, some ring-bound journals with, you know, mostly a botanical type of theme, but with some kind of like children's uh, elements too. So I'm going to have those, you know, on my table. And then also I got some, uh, I've had these covers for quite a while, these uh, How and Why books. And <clears throat> so I just you know, kind of prep those to make into some, like, large junk journals. So there's five of them all together. It was a whole set. So that's what I'm working on. And then when January comes around, I'll probably make some minis again. Anyway, so those, that's, that's a little um, library pocket project. And then, you know, you could just add whatever kind of tag, whatever kind of tag or ephemera or something like that into those. So anyway, thanks for watching guys. Love you. Bye for now.